What's up everyone? Today we're going to look at some best practice for the fundamentals of variables, how to name them, how to use them, just kind of best practice all around. Let's start by having a look at one of the variable types, which is colors. Figma want to give us some sort of best practice on how we should name them and use them. So using collections, Figma want to recommend to us that we start with the most deepest level of collections and create a collection that we can call primitives. In this collection, you would actually store the actual colors. So you'd store a purple, a red, a green, a black, and name them just like that. What is the actual color? And then we can use a scale of shades, like you see here, purple 100, 200, 300, etc. We can also group these colors inside of the primitives collection. So we can group them by, for example, all the purples together, or all the block colors together, or the gray scales. But we start off with the basic collection, which is primitives. Then we will add a second collection called semantic. Now the semantic collection will reference colors from the primitives and these are called aliases. So for example, I can say in semantic, I will have a variable called background warning and the value for that one will be purple 200. Yeah, so I'm referencing a color variable that I've already created in primitives. We will do this in a second so you can see it happen live. Third level of collection, and they mentioned as well that we might not always need this, would be on the component level. So I can have a component level collection, and inside of it, I can have a variant called button background or a group of variants called button, and inside of it, one variant called background, and I will set the color to background warning. So I'm kind of calling up an alias from the semantic collection, which is calling up an alias from the primitive collection, which means that if I use this really like nested system, I'm really protecting myself because if now we're not using purples anymore, but all the shades of purple need to be changed to shades of green, I just need to change them on the primitives and everyone else that's calling out to them will just be kind of changed because of that. And we can do this using numbers as well. It's not just for the colors, it can be used for numbers too. So that is the variable best practice that's been handed down to us from Figma. Let's have a look at how we use this in practice and maybe add some modes to make it even a bit more interesting. In the file in the description box, you will find these buttons. So I have 18 buttons over here. They're all the same kind of button, but I have 18 of them, right? I've got a default state, a hover state, a disabled state, and I've got primary and secondary buttons. So what I could do or what I have done in the past is create all of these into a component set with different variants, right? And that works perfectly. But now using variables, we don't need to do that. Let's have a look at how we can use that primitive semantic component framework to make this into three components instead of 18. First thing we can look at is creating some primitives. Let's start with the colors. I click on local variable and name my collection primitives. Let's add a color. So I'm going to click on create a variable and click on a color. The first one is probably going to be purple, right? And I see I have three shades of purple used over here. Let's say I know from my old design system that they are purple 50, purple 300, 500 and 600. So I'm going to start with purple 50. Then I can click over here just on the value. I can use my eyedropper tool. In order to get it, you can use control and C. That's control even for a Mac and you get the eyedropper. Just going to Take it up from here, purple 50, great. Let's add another purple 300, for example. Click over here, control C. So if this was a real situation, obviously I'd probably have a lot more purple colors. I'd probably have the whole scale. But for now, this is great. I'll select all three of them holding down shift, right click and group into a new selection. And I'll call this purple. Now they're still in the primitives collection, but now they have this kind of subheader and they're in their own group. Let's do the same for the gray scale, right? I see I'm using some grays and some whites. So I've popped that in again. If this was a real design system, I'd probably have lots more colors. But this is fine for now. And I'll group them just to make it simpler. Selecting all of them while holding down shift, right click, new group. I'll just call this gray scale. Great. So I think now in my primitives, I have all the colors that I need, right? Let me just zoom up a bit. Yeah, I have all of them that I need. Now let's move on to the semantics of the colors. I'm going to add a new collection and call it semantic. Let's start with the label colors. Add a variable color and call it label. Now, this is where we have two different modes, right? We have primary and we have secondary. Now in the future, Figma is going to launch theming as well, which means we can tag something as like primary hover, primary default, primary disabled. Right now we can't do that. So we have a way around it. We'll just take kind of the simpler route out. So we're going to select two modes over here. I'm adding it with this plus. One is going to be primary and one is going to be secondary. 
great. So in my label, I know that when it's primary, I'm using a white color. So I'm not going to just put FFFFF. Instead of that, I'm going to use an alias. So I'm going to call one of the variables I already set up in the primitive collection. To do that, I just click on the color picker and then instead of custom, I go into libraries and then just find it, white. Great, and you can see how it looks different in here as well. And for secondary, let's see, I'm here just using styles so I can actually see what it is. I'm using 300, so I'm going to go into libraries and use purple 300. Now let's do another one for the background. Now for background, I'm gonna have three different kinds of backgrounds. I'm gonna call this one default. And the default one, what does this one use? This one uses 300 as well. So library is 300. And then for secondary, we know that the secondary buttons on the default state, they use a white background. So click on my fill, libraries and white. I'm gonna do that again for hover and for disabled. Perfect. So we have the three different backgrounds set up and they are changed between primary and secondary. Now secondary uses a border and primary doesn't. So there's a way around this. We know that secondary uses the same border all around. So we just need to make one of these. I'm going to call it border. And for secondary, it's really easy. We just need to call for the purple 300 primitive. But then the primary one doesn't have a border. So we can kind of fake our way through this. We just put low opacity and done. That's it. Okay, so there'll be a border there. We'll have to add that, but we just put it on low opacity so you can't really see it. Maybe one day we'll have a way of just using it on one, but I think for now, this is a good fake out. Great. So we've now set up all of our colors. Let's set that up in the space. So I'm just going to pull one of these buttons away. I've just duplicated it to over here. And let's start setting it up. So for my background, I know that I don't want to use a style, right? I want to detach that and I want to use a variable instead. I'll click on my fill, go into libraries. And when I scroll down, I'll just see all of the different variables that I've created. So for this, I know I need background default, right? Let's select our label. The label needs to be label and then I need to add that border, right? So I'm gonna click on my stroke and change the color in the libraries to border. Wonderful. I'm gonna duplicate it twice, holding down option and shift, just duplicating it twice. This one, I'm going to set the background instead of background default to hover, and this one, I'm going to set it to disabled. Perfect. Now, all three of these buttons, you will see that I have the variable mode selection button over here because I have the primary and the secondary modes. So if I click on this, I can now set the semantic and you see it's the semantic collection between primary and secondary. I'll set these ones to primary. Now I'll duplicate them holding down option and shift, just dragging it out here and set these to secondary. Wow. Okay, so already I only needed to create one button, right? If this button was a component, I just needed one of those and it housed inside of it all of these and all of these, yeah? So I just did that once with my variables and I didn't need to create them all and make a component set. Now let's look at how we do the same with the numbers. This one is a tiny bit trickier. If we look at our different buttons, we can see that we have border radius changes and the padding of the auto layout changes. So I can see this one is four border radius, this one is eight and this one is 16. This one is 16 horizontal padding, this one is 24 and this one is 40 and then vertical padding 8 16 and 24. so let's write that down the numbers that i need are 4 8 12 16 24 and 40. so let's make these variables now in my primitive collection i'm just going to create a number variable now how you call it is up to you so if i'm just creating the smallest one i can call it extra small i can call it space Four, but I know I want to use it for multiple different things. So I'm just actually going to name it four. Just call it four and the value is four. Super simple. I'll do that for all of them now. Great, so I have all my numbers. I am going to group them and I will call it maybe uh, number values. Yeah, fine. Now, again, we might have had better naming if this was a real system, but for now, this works fine. Now, one more thing I wanna show you. If I go to this edit button over here, I can select what kind of the scope is of these numbers. So if I wanna say four can only be used for corner radius, I can tick these off. And now you will see that if I try and use this, let's say for width, 
I go apply variable, I won't see number four. I'll only see from eight and upwards. But if I try and set it for the corner radius, I will see four. Okay, so you can use that scoping in order to protect yourself. It's kind of like the preferred instances things that we have in the component properties. So it's basically saying you have this variable, but you can only use it for specific things. So for this one, we can't really put it inside of semantic because semantic already has the primary and secondary mode. And we know that the sizing doesn't change if it's primary or secondary, but it does change if it's small, medium or large. So I'm going to add a new collection and I'll just call it button sizing. And let's create a variable in here. So I need a number variable and let's say the first one will be the radius. And I have three different modes, right? I've got a small, medium and a large. So for small, I know we are using four corner radius. So I'll just call this alias for medium. We are using eight. So I will call this variable and for large we're using 16 so I just call 16. Now this might seem to you like why are we doing this we could just type in 16 but this is just to protect us in the long run so if one day we do want to change this and now we're not using multipliers of four we're actually using multipliers of three we can change that in the original and that will trickle down to the other collections. Let's create one for the vertical padding so my vertical padding here is eight here it's 16 and here it's 24. I've added my horizontal padding as well. Now let's assign it. So I'll go in here, I'll just delete these buttons and, and let's assign it to the three of these kind of at the same time. So I'll assign the border radius first. I'll go into here and say border radius, so button sizing radius. Then in my horizontal padding, I'll click over here and find H padding. And I'll assign the vertical padding as well. So V padding. Great. So these buttons are now assigned to different variables for their corner radius, their horizontal and vertical padding, the label color, the background color, and the border color. These three are my primary buttons. They're my default state, my hover state, and my disabled state. And because they're already set to the primary mode over here, you can see that in the layers panel as well, where it says just primary over it. But now I have another set of modes that I can connect them to. So if I click on the layers, you can see I've got semantic and I've got button sizing. So they are all small. So I've selected that, then I'll just grab them and duplicate them. So holding down option and shift, we'll duplicate them about over here. And instead of primary, I will set them to secondary. So now they've changed their background colors. So they're still default hover state and disabled, but now they have these secondary background colors. I'll just zoom out a tiny bit, select all of these, and then just duplicate both of them, hold, holding down option and shift and dragging. Now it will say deleted mode on semantic, and that's because it's kind of a mix. It's recognizing both. So don't worry about that because we don't need to change the semantic. We just need to change the sizing. Instead of small, I'll change it to medium, and then I'll grab these two, duplicate them again, and change to large. I'll select everything and just use tidy up to make it a bit neater and look at that. Okay, I'll move them over here so we can see them against the buttons that we had before. Look at that, okay? So we have the same result, right? But now all we needed is three buttons. If the three of these were a component set, for example, or just three separate components, that's all we needed instead of 18. Basically inside of each of these buttons, one button holds six different versions inside of it, right? It holds a primary default small, primary default medium, primary default large, and secondary default small, secondary default medium, and secondary default large, yeah? And then these ones as well for the hover, and these ones as well for the disabled. So that was my quick introduction on best practice in naming variables and how we can use them on the most simple component and just make it once and use it however many times we need. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below how you're getting on and what kind of stuff you want to learn more about with variables or just in general. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you at the next one.